Again, the first drill that we're gonna look at is this little short draw shot drill. Now this drill looks very simple and easy until you try to do it. The point here is to go around the circle and get position on the next ball using a short draw stroke. And where it seems simple, the complication comes in. If you're not precise in where you draw the cue ball, it becomes impossible to get on the next ball. And when I say get on the next ball, I don't mean just pocketing the next ball, but being in a position where you can pocket the next ball and again, get on position for the ball after that. So this is certainly an intermediate to advanced drill, even though it looks very simple, but give it a shot. Start out with three balls, work your way up, or even better, start out with five balls and see just how difficult it is. Now, on the next drill, which looks like the exact same one, this one I'm gonna allow you to cheat. So this one is pretty good for guys that can't quite get position on each one of those shots and uses the side rail to get position on the next ball. So let's take a look at what that next drill looks like. Here we're gonna give you an opportunity to use whatever you can to get on the next ball. On our next drill, here we allow ourselves to cheat a little bit. So where the drill looks the same, here, we're gonna allow you to, if you get out of position, use whatever means necessary to get position again and get yourself back into the circle. So as you can see on that shot, I shot it with low right hand English to come off the side rail and get position on the one ball. So let's look at it once again and you'll see what I'm talking about. Because we're out of position on the one ball to get on the five, we shoot with low right hand English come off the side rail and spin back to the middle of the table so that we can get position on the five. The rest of the rack is shot with low center ball, no English applied. I really like this next shot and I like the drill. And let's break it down and talk about the two individually. The shot is set up where you are straight in on the corner pocket. You don't have an opportunity to cheat the pocket and shoot a follow shot to come down table. So you have to shoot a draw shot and come off of the long rail to get down table for a ball that's on the short rail. So each shot, as you go from side to side, is you're using a different type of English. The key here is that the shot gives you two opportunities to scratch, which is what makes it a bad shot. The shot gives you an opportunity to scratch in the side pocket, and then if you hit it too well, it gives you an opportunity to scratch in the corner pocket. Now watch this shot. As you can see, I almost scratched in the corner pocket. So the ideal situation here is to come off of the long rail, get down table without going all the way to the opposite pocket. If you can manage to do that, you can get on the ball that you have at the opposite end and not risk scratching in that opposite corner. So I would take this shot only in dire situations, as pretty as it is, uh, you don't wanna come back and scratch in that side or that corner. What you might not realize, unless you're an advanced player, is that your opportunity or your risk, we should call it, of scratching in that side pocket is much lesser than your risk of scratching in the corner. Most players coming back with that draw shot know that the cue ball is gonna hit in a specific spot on the long rail. It's that opposite end of the table that you're at most risk. The reason is because if you have more English or more, more spin on the ball coming down, uh, if you follow through a little bit more than you did before or anything changes, the trajectory of that cue ball as it heads towards that corner pocket becomes less and less predictable. So keep this one in mind, but keep in mind that it is a risky shot because I've shot this in matches and it was spectacular until I scratched in that far corner pocket. The other thing to keep in mind and the thing that makes this shot difficult is that because you're putting so much English on the cue ball, 
a lot of your draw is being sucked up into that energy to put the English on the ball. So where you can make this shot without the English, the angle that you get on the object ball is going to be much greater. And also keep in mind that this shot very often is better performed without the English because you reduce your risk of scratching in that corner pocket by a lot. So how you approach it would depend on where you need to get for your shot after the ball that you're coming down table for. This next drill, if you're familiar with this channel, you've seen it probably a half dozen times. Uh, it's one of my go-to drills, whether I'm playing on this eight foot table or a gold crown. I love this drill. And of course it's gonna be more difficult on a gold crown uh, nine foot table, but it's something I go to all the time. If you're playing on a bar box, it takes on a whole different meaning. So I would recommend if you can find an eight foot, nine foot table and you're an advanced player, that's probably where you should play this, uh, this drill. So the drill is simple. I put a string of balls at the halfway point in the table. I get behind the head spot and simply shoot long draw shots, relatively long draw shots, uh, into the far corner pockets and have the cue ball come back to the short rail that I'm shooting from. I call this the acid test because if you do anything wrong on this shot, most chances are you're going to miss it. If you don't follow through properly, you're not gonna draw the cue ball back to the rail. If you put any unnecessary English on the ball, you're probably not gonna make the shot. So there's a lot of things that are being tested when you take this shot. And I think that is one of the best drills if you have a short period of time and you wanna work on just getting your stroke down pat. Now you can make mistakes and make this shot. My fundamentals are sometimes totally out the window but you have to do a lot of things right to make this shot and draw the cue ball back. Obviously, if you have tighter pockets or a larger table or anything like that, your room for error is gonna be lesser. And uh, at the same time, you can always cheat a little bit on this drill by moving the balls closer or giving yourself a shorter shot. So regardless of your level of play, this is a drill that you can adapt to until you can make the balls from the longer distance. As you can see on the screen, what I did was move the balls out further from the halfway point to do the exact same drill. And this is what I would recommend anyone who is an advanced player do. Uh, some guys will be able to make these shots with the cue ball and object ball quite a distance apart, and other guys will need to move the balls closer together. But feel free to adjust the drill for your skill level so that you can work on this shot regardless of where you are, what your skill level is, and what your goals are for your game. So let's look at the last couple balls and then we're gonna step this up to even another level. For our next variation of this drill, we're gonna put a ball on the head spot. In my case, it's gonna be that gold eight ball that you sometimes see in these videos. And what we're gonna do is give ourselves ball in hand, shoot the exact same drill, but this time, instead of going back to the hedge spot rail, the short rail, your goal is to make the object ball and draw the cue ball back to knock that gold ball off the head spot. And this is a good drill because not only does it give you an understanding of what you should do with ball in hand, and you have to shoot a draw shot. But it also gives you an understanding of just how accurate your draw shot is. So you have to do two things here. One, you have to put the object ball in a proper spot to be able to hit the gold ball, let's call it this time. And you also have to be able to draw the cue ball back on the correct plane in order to hit it. So I hope you guys got something out of this video and out of these drills. And what you should do is the drills you shoot should be your own. So you don't have to do the drills that I do, but find drills that work for you. Drills that work on your weak spots in your game and make them part of your practice session. As much as we hate to do drills, they are necessary. And you need to find drills that work best in your situation 
given the amount of time that you have to practice and the things that you most want to work on. Hope you guys liked it. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so and have a great day.